verse 6. We have two videos for this um, chapter, and we're going to look at the integumentary system. Now, the skin is also known as the integument, the integumentary system, and includes the skin and its accessory organs, such as hair, nails, and glands. Now, the term dermatology, what does that mean? mean? We've heard that term before. So what does it mean? It's a study of the integumentary system as well as any medical treatment for the system as well. Now, we know that the skin is the most vulnerable organ in the body because it's exposed to a number of things such as radiation, trauma, infections, and of course, um, injurious chemicals. Now, it receives more medical treatment than any other organ system. Think about it, it, it does. Just to get to the other systems of the body, it has to pass through the integumentary system. So picture somebody um, going, to, going to do surgery, maybe on, just say, on the cardiovascular system. Um, treatment has to be given to the skin in order to penetrate, in order for you or for the surgeon to get to the cardiovascular system. So it does receive more medical treatment than any other organ that we have within the, within the body. So here we have the structure of the skin. Um, the skin is the largest organ of the body, which everybody should know that, and it consists of the outer epidermis. So we have the outer epidermis, and then the deeper area is called the dermis. Now the hypodermis, it underlies this latter layer, but is not a true part of the system. Now when we look at the skin itself, now the skin covers the palms of the, the palms and the, it does not, it, the, the thick skin, sorry, it covers the palms and the soles of the feet. So let me stop here just for a minute because I'm kind of going jumping ahead of myself. Um, I did show you in the last slide um, just an overview of the skin itself. So we have the epidermis, the dermis, and the hy hypodermis. So to say it's not really a, one of the layers of the skin. And you notice here we have various glands. We have the apocrine gland. We have the sebaceous gland. We have also um, hair receptors. We have the hair bulb and various sensory nerves and, and adipose tissue as well as blood vessels running along through this hypodermis layer. And then we see the hair follicles, we have the, res res um, the sweat pores, um, we also have touch receptors and also more blood vessels and blood capillaries here within, this, within um, the dermis layer. In this slide here, it talks about um, I, what I mentioned earlier, con containing to, pertaining to um, the body, the skin being the largest, the body's largest and heaviest organ, and it covers approximately 1.5 to 2.0 uh, meters per square, is approximately 15 percent of the body's weight, and most skin is one to two uh, millimeters thick. Now I did mention layers of the skin, um, which we have the epidermis, which is showed here, and, the, and the, if you want to look in your textbook, also at that other particular figure, uh, figure 1.1, 6.1, sorry, if you follow along, that's fine, but I saw these other um, diagrams, and I thought it, it actually shows it a little bit better. I actually like this, these diagrams as well. So we have the epidermis, and the epidermis um, is the striated squamous epithelium. We have the dermis layer, which is considered to be or made up compo composed mainly of that connective tissue layer, and the hypodermis, which is the very last, last layer. Okay? Alright, so let me talk about thick skin. Let me get back to, I kind of jumped ahead, but let me talk about thick skin. It covers the palms, um, the soles of the feet, corresponding surfaces of the skin, I mean of the finger, 
Peter's toes, and it contains sweat glands. Now, thin skin now, I'm talking about thin skin, thin skin covers the rest of the body, and it contains hair follicles and sebaceous glands, as well as sweat glands. Alright, so here's the skin of the finger. Hopefully you guys remember your bones. <laughs> well, well hope we will get into bones, but if you guys are familiar with bones. Um, but here we have the epidermis layer, highlighted here in the in the blue. We have our dermis layer, which goes that lies right underneath. So on the top part, on the um, superficial part of, of the of the finger, you notice it is thin skin. So that's where you have the hair follicles. Um, and then on the thick skin area, which is the hands, the tips of the fingers on the inner aspect of it, that is your thick skin, and you don't have that here. Okay? But it does have your sweat glands. And of course, you have your different um, bones, which be your distal um, phalanx, your middle, and also your proximal. So that's dealing with the bones. So let's get back to the skin. So what's the fun what are the functions of the skin? Well, the first one deals with resistance to trauma and infection. Now when you look at the skin itself, it, it, it is um, resistant and it recovers from trauma very, very quickly. Now this is healthy skin. Now the, epi, um, the epidermal cells, those are packed with, cr uh, with keratin and they're linked with, um, with um, desmosomes that are going to increase the durability and the permeability of the skin. The skin is also slightly acidic with a pH of 4 to 6 which is going to limit the growth of bacteria, which is great. The second function is that it has other barriers, other barrier functions. The skin is there to, um, it's a barrier to absorb excess water, or it loses um, excess water. Um, the epidermis is there to block UV radiation. And the skin is a barrier to some harmful chemicals, which is permeable to some drugs and, of course, poisons. The third um, function would be vitamin D synthesis, which is very important. Now, the skin carries out the first step in vitamin D synthesis. Vitamin B, which you should know, is needed for bone development and, of course, maintenance. And, of course, our livers and our kidneys, the liver and the kidneys, sorry, have to complete that particular process. Then we have scintillation. The skin contains a variety of nerve endings for heat, cold, touch, texture, um, pressure, um, let's see, vibration, and of course, tissue injury. Uh, most sensory receptors are abundant on the face, palm, the fingers, soles, nipples, and the genitals. Relative, relatively few receptors are on the back and in um, skin overlaying the joint. When we look at um, thermal regulation, well, thermal receptors in the skin, they're going to transmit signals to the brain, resulting in vasodilation and vasoconstriction of the dermal blood vessels to prevent heat loss in response to chilling, which is cold outside, and vasodilation in response to um, overheating. So vasodilation, hopefully everybody who knows what that is, is basically the vessels are opening. So if you're hot and you start to sweat, your vasal, um, your vessels, your blood vessels are opening to ensure that you have um, sufficient um, blood flow and that you are um, releasing the excess amount of heat and sweating. Okay, so then we have vasoconstriction in the blood vessels um, decrease in size. So we're trying to ensure that we um, keep as much heat in as as possible. The blood vessels are going to to reduce the amount of blood flow to that particular area of the body. So we have more blood um, redirecting to your um, organs within the torso. Okay. Um, then we have um, nonverbal communication, such as facial expressions. Right here in, um, in this particular figure, figure here to the right, um, facial expression in humans is the result of complex skeletal muscles that pull on the face on the skin of the face. Now the general appearance of skin, hair, and nails is also important uh, to social appearance and to a person's emotional state. Alright, and then when we look at transdermal absorption, what does that even, even make sense? So when we look at 
electrons are um, absorbed some telekinetic ability of the skin to absorb chemicals, um, making it possible to administer um, s several um, medicines such as ointments or lotions or by means of um, adhesive patches. But again, it releases medicine um, through the, the, the skin's membrane. So for example, you have inflammation that can be treated with an um, hydrocortisone ointment glycerin patches, patches, and those are used to relieve like um, heart pain um, or even the nicotine patches are used to help overcome um, nicotine addiction or other medical patch patches are used to control high blood pressure and cause motion sickness. So those are just some examples of your um, trans transdermal absorption. Okay, so let's took a take a look at the first layer of skin. Epidermis. Now, the epidermis is a keratinized stratified squamous epithelium, and like other epithelia, it lacks blood vessels and depends on fusion for um, nutrition. Sorry, for nutri for nutrients and um, and waste for movement. Now, the epidermis um, is covered. cells, we have the um, myelinocytes, we have the keratinocytes, we have the textile cells, and we have the, dem um, the dendritic cells. So let's look at the stem cells. The stem cells, there are um, uh, differential cells that they're, they're, they're going to divide to help create these keratinocytes. And stem cells are found in the deepest stratum basal. Now the majority of the, s of the, of the um, epidermal cells are in the keratinocytes. And these are the ones that are going to synthesize the, the keratin. Then we have the myelinocytes. Myelinocytes are, um, also occur only in the strat stratum basal layer. Um, and they synthesize the pigment shed this melanin containing fragments from the tips of the of the branching processes. The keratinocytes, they're going to phagocytize these fragments and accumulate the, mag um, the melanin on the sunny side of the nucleus. The melanin is going to, um, it shields the DNA from any type of UV rays or UV radiation. Now, the tectile cells, um, these are receptors for the sense of touch, and they're going to be found also found in the stratum basal. And they are associated with the underlying dermal nerve fibers. The dendrocyte cells, or the, the dendritic, dendritic cells, sorry, um, which are immune cells that migrate from the bone marrow, and they're found in the stratum spinosum and the stratum. Where they stand guard against any type of foreign pathogens. So I mentioned a few um, few layers, which would be your stratum gracilum. You have your um, stratum spinosum, and you have this deepest layer, which would be your your stratum basal. Of this epidermis, 
So the first one here um, is that I have listed here is our stratum um, is our stratum um, corneum, and that is up to 30 layers of dead, scaly, um, keratinized skin or cells. And it forms a very durable surface layer that we have on top, and it does.
kitchen is this? No, the, the melanocytes and the cacto cells and the stem cells are scattered um, among bees.
fibroblasts and other cells found in fibrous connective tissue. Now, hair follicles and nail roots are embedded in the dermis. Skeletal muscles, they're going to attach to the dermal collagen fibers, um, and they produce the facial expressions that you usually have. Now, the boundaries between the epidermis and the dermis is usually wavy, as you see here. It's usually wavy. Now, the upward waves are called dermal papillae, and the downward waves are called epidermal ridges. Now, on the fingertips, this wavy boundary produces this friction ridges responsible for our fingertips. Sorry, our fingerprints. I'm sorry. Now, um, the two zones of the dermis are the papillary layer and the reticular um, reticular layer. Now, the the papillary layer is a thin zone in and near the dermal papillae, as you see here. Okay. Um, and is loosely organized, and it allows for of the leukocytes and is rich in small vessels. So this is the papillary layer. Now the reticular um, layer is deeper and thicker and it consists of dense irregular connective tissue with thicker collagen bundles. Um, now stretching of the skin may tear the collagen fibers in here and it produces stretch marks. And that usually comes with um, either pregnancy or Here's another picture of of the of the skin itself, the lipids, um, the glands, the, the muscles, the erective um, pilate muscles, and here's our, our layers. Here's the epidermis, and the dermis is showing us our papillary layer. It's very thin. Let's look at the hypodermis, or what they will call the sebaceous tissue. It does have um, an, an indistinct boundary, but it contains more um, areolar and adipose tissue. And it binds the skin to any type of underlining, any under binds the skin to any underlining tissues that we have. Now, the hypodermis is the target of sebaceous injections because it's highly vascular and it absorbs drugs um, um, very quickly. Now the sebaceous fat is the hypo um, the the hypodermis um, the sebaceous fat sorry is hypodermis composed primarily of adipose tissue. Now sebaceous fat wh what does it do? serves as an energy reservoir and it helps with um, protecting thermal insulation and make sure that we are still warm inside as well as um, the spacious fat it, it it averages about eight percent thicker in men than in women than in men and of course it's going to vary with age and then of course with any type of um, physical activity but um, having spacious um, subcutaneous fat is very important Let's look at skin color. Remember, the skin color is produced by um, pigment molecules. Now, the more significant fact, the most significant factor in skin color is the melanin. And where is that produced from? What's produced? The melanin sites. And um, it accumulates these keratin sites. Now, the two forms of melanin are the brownish black and the ye and the reddish yellow. The brownish black um, is the eumelanin, and the yellow, reddish yellow, is the is the theomelanin, and the theomelanin contains um, sulfur. Now, these the different skin colors have the same number of melanocytes. Now, in in dark skins. Um, individuals, the melanin is also
also more is more spread out throughout the keratinocytes, and it breaks down more slowly. While in um, light-skinned people or individuals, the melanin contains um, clumpy near to it at a clumps near to the to the nucleus, and it breaks down a lot faster. also um, varies with exposure to the UV radiation which stimulates um, melanin uh, synthesis. Now variation in ancestry, it, uh, ancestral exposure to UV radiation that accounts for geographic and ethnic differences in skin color today. Now other other factors in skin color are hemoglobin and keratin. Hemoglobin, which is that red pigment of blood, it imparts reddish to pinkish hues to the skin. Now keratin is a is a yellow pigment and can contain concentrations and become concentrated in the in the stratum um, corneum and of course in the um, subcutaneous fat. Now the skin must exhibit the sun the skin may exhibit, I'm sorry, abnormal colors of diagnostic value. And we have um, cyanosis. Cyanosis is a blue color to the skin resulting from um, deficiencies of oxygen, which is people in the in the infant as well as in these fingertips here. Um, now with that deficiency, it turns the hemoglobin to a more reddish violet color. And it also um, it may result from blockage of airways, um, respiratory arrest, and of course cold weather that will slow down the blood flow to those particular areas. Lines, 
are markings on the fingertips responsible for finger print. Now, they enhance one's sensibility to texture and are thought to improve one's grasp of objects. Now, fingerprints remain unchanged for life and are unique for every individual. So every individual has their own fingerprint. When we look at fraction lines or fraction creases, these are marked sites where the skin folds um, during the, the deflection of, of your joint. So these are these areas right in here. These are your flexion lines. You can see also in this individual holding the infamous fingers. Okay. Then we have freckles. Freckles are flattened, um, a flattened um, melanized patches that vary with heredity, with heredity sorry, and exposure to the sun. Then we have um, moles, moles, um, <laughs> what's a mole? Basically it's an elevated patch of myelinated skin, often with dew. Now moles are harmless but should be watched for changes that might cause malignancy. Could lead to, to cancer, could be cancer skin. Then we have birthmarks. Birthmarks are patches of discolored skin caused by benign tumors of, of blood capillary. Now the strawberry looking um, birthmarks usually develop approximately a month after birth and about 90% of it um, disappears by the age of 5 or 6 years old. Hemogeomas, sorry. Um, and that ones are, those are, sorry, are flattened and a little bit duller, up to 90%. They, 90% of it will disappear by the age of 9. And this is called a port wine stain. And it is flat and pinkish to dark purple. And that remains for the rest of the individual's life. So I'm going to stop here. Um, this should be halfway through the chapter. Sorry, chapter six, part one. Uh, we're gonna look at in part two. We're gonna look at the hair and nails, as well as um, cancers, types of cancers, and skin burns, and the different stages of of hair growth. Okay. So if you have any questions, feel free to post your questions. So go ahead and look at part two.